Aloha and welcome to Restaurants Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. I am your host, Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director of Hawaii Restaurant Association. And twice a month, we discuss important and timely topics centered around the Hawaii food service industry. So today I'd like to give my guests an opportunity to introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about them. So first, hey Ed, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about the, the company you're with. Sure, um, Ed Chung, I'm general manager of Hagenon Media Group. Um, in short, we are a food service digital marketing agency that helps businesses grow their sales by leveraging technology. Uh, creative design and sensible marketing strategies that work with most budgets. Um, Hagedown Media Group is um, part of the Hagedown Corporation, which is a billion dollar company that operates a fully diversified pol portfolio of um, businesses ranging from media companies to hotels and even casinos and golf courses. Uh, we are part of the, as part of the media group, um, we focus on digital marketing and operate in four states, Idaho, Washington, Montana, and Hawaii. Um, we have a uh, centralized uh, production center in uh, Idaho with a team of SEO experts, programmers, content writers, and graphic design department. Um, here in Hawaii, Robin Kennedy leads our digital marketing efforts and has done a tremendous job by helping our clients increase their sales. It's also noteworthy to know that the Hawaii division also publishes This Week magazine, which is picked up by millions of visitors each year. Our work and experience in the visitor market has great synergy with our digital marketing services because we know how to reach a transient market that is only physically present in Hawaii for an average of seven to 10 days. And that's what we do. Thank you, Ed. And now Robin, could you please introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, you guys. Thanks so much for having me. My name is Robin Kennedy. I am the vice president of Hagadon Media Group. Um, my sole purpose originally when I was hired by Clint Schroeder, which many of your listeners or followers I'm sure will know, um, he hired me almost seven years ago to come in and really kick in a digital marketing division. And we knew um, based on my years and years of experience, I've been in Hawaii 22 years. So the majority um, have my time has been in media. So TV, radio, print, you know, 12 years at Paycom, you know, servicing any customers looking to work for the military. It was there that we were got excited about digital. We saw technology that the military was using to specifically target individuals at the street level. So we um, put our names in the hat and told the community we were looking to do some, you know, different digital than some of the other uh, strategists were doing. And Hagadon picked us up and we've been happily here ever since. So seven years, we are basically a full service agency, but we focus mostly on digital strategies for our clients. Yes, and Robin has a wealth of knowledge in this area. Robin and I have known each other for how many years, Robin? 22. <laughs> At least, girl. Yeah, least. Around, back on TV and radio. Yeah, yeah. It's been We're great. happy, happy yeah. to have you on the show. Thank you Thank so much. You. Yes, and Mike Palmer. Hey, Mike. Why don't you Hello, uh, Hi. Um, yes, uh, I'm Mike Palmer, owner and managing partner of Ho'okipa Partners, a hospitality management consulting firm, and we are currently operating the Kohio Avenue Food Hall in the heart of Waikiki at International Marketplace. I, too, have been in Hawaii for 22 years, originally from California, and um, so we have a lot in common right there. Right. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Today, we're talking about digital marketing for restaurants and businesses. So the name of the show is Digital Marketing 101 for Restaurants and Businesses. And as everyone knows, right, the, the power of digital marketing. Today, we're going to talk about how you can target your customers with the power of geofencing and geotargeting technology. And Ed and Robin are gonna demystify that whole digital marketing industry and how you can use it for your advantage. Geofencing can work as a multi-channel marketing strategy and can even help you with your social media presence. More specifically, geotargeting allows you to set targeting criteria while inside a defined location radius. So. Today, we're gonna to be discussing it in detail. So this is a really great opportunity for businesses who understand that to drive your brand awareness and to drive traffic, you need to have this tool, 
of digital marketing in your marketing toolbox. So let's start talking about it. So I'm going to first start off with um, Robin. So how do you help businesses increase sales and awareness in general? Uh, well, basically, I we've created here a very conversion oriented business strategy. So we start with all of our customers, regardless if they're restaurants or doctors, lawyers, whatever kind of business, with a discovery call. We truly try to pinpoint exactly what it is that the advertiser is trying to accomplish. So not a big fan of branding. I mean, it's always great. Let's say it's a new restaurant and nobody has any idea that they're they're there. We'll spend a little bit of the budget, you know, branding, just large amounts of people, getting everybody aware. But at the end of the day, especially with COVID and all the things that have gone on in our market and worldwide, frankly, there's not everybody has these billion dollar ad budgets anymore. So again, we specifically, um, you know, have separated ourselves from the pack and that we're really about targeted conversion traffic. So finding out who that specific customer is, um, you know, geofencing that you shared, there's a lot of different strategies within that geofence strategy, but you can Typically, geofence, our tech has the ability to come within 18 inches of a building. Um, so you can geofence specific buildings, you know, not waste impressions on people that are not your customer. Um, or we can also curate lists. Or let's say a restaurant has, you know, a rewards program. They have a CRM full of their, their customers. We can take that file, upload it into our technology, and we can serve specific ads to those people at the household level. They can, you know, cross the waste match. So there's all kinds of amazing opportunity. But what we typically do um, first and foremost is find out what the client's conversion strategy is. What are they trying to accomplish? And then we build all of our campaigns and what technology we're going to use digitally based on their goals. Cool. Oh, my goodness, Robin. That sounds like a lot. So that's great. Mike, so what's your experience with today's digital marketing capabilities and, and how's it helped your restaurant? Well, uh, actually, if it wasn't for geo tracking and geo fencing, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you today. <laughs> uh, I've got a pretty interesting story about it. So um, back when I first joined, actually, um, it used to be called the Street Food Hall by Michael Mina. Um, you know, my first day on the job, I was told that uh, it was very large possibility it was going to be shut down in about three months, unless we could figure out how to turn the place around. Um, so I did whatever I, I could to, you know, increase sales and cut costs and things and try to make it a viable business. What happened in about, a, would say, a six-month period, um, it's got a happy ending to the story. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, the mall actually did a geo-tracking survey of where the customers were going when they entered the mall, either Calicoa or Cujillo Avenue. What that survey showed them was that we were the most highly trafficked spot in their entire mall. So now <laughs> it really swung the pendulum from, oh, we got to shut this place down and lease it out to somewhere else to, oh my gosh, we can't do without this place. This is what's bringing people to our mall. So they, they realize we're more of an anchor than say Saks Fifth Avenue, um, bless their soul, you know. They, yeah, with five whole people in there, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they realized that it, it, people were coming to see us and then disperse throughout the mall after visiting us or before visiting us. So um, their attitude about the food hall changed significantly after that. And so I'm a huge fan of the, what those capabilities do. Um, Geofencing is definitely cutting edge. You know, um, every year I think more and more people are getting on board with geofencing and how they can cap capture customers, whether it's, you know, within 500 feet of their space, a, a few blocks, a couple miles. Um, you know, the technology is really cutting edge. And I think a lot of restaurant uh, owners don't know about the possibilities with geo tracking and how you can increase your business and drive people into your restaurant by utilizing it. But um, I'm a big fan. Nice. Thank you, Mike. Thank you so much. So, you know, we, our restaurant um, industry is not only restaurants. I'm sorry, our food service industry is not only restaurants. You know, we have bakeries, coffee shops, uh, farmers, distributors, produce. 
um, suppliers. So what's really important is the talk about social media, you know, social media, Facebook, TikTok, um, Instagram. So what's the difference between social media marketing and social media posting and boosting, Robin? There's a difference, right? There is a difference. Um, thank you so much for asking that question because I feel like it gets missed. I'm not sure, Mike, if you experienced that, but the posting and boosting, and I truly appreciate people that pay us to do that for them. Um, I haven't ever been a huge fan as a marketer. I'm not that big um, excited about pe people paying me to post because my personal opinion is that nobody's going to find your Facebook page. I mean, when I'm trying to figure out a restaurant. I'm not going to Facebook to search, you know, restaurants near me, right? So posting and boosting is great when you, you are, you know, doing your lifestyle, you know, you're communicating things that are going on, maybe daily specials, et cetera. But at the end of the day, you're talking to your friends, your friends' friends, you know, very specific relationship with the people that like or follow your pages. The Facebook marketing gives us the ability to get out of that you know, seven degrees of Kevin Bacon thing where it's all people you know. Um, and you move on to marketing into people's news feeds that are your potential customers. So let's say you're a fine dining restaurant. You're not going to want to be reaching an 18-year-old, you know, or even a, you know, 25-year-old that's talking about, you know, whatever happened at Waimea Bay this weekend. You want to be able to target people that are your customer that have, um, you know, basically it's targeted like potential customers, um, you know, versus friends and family. I guess that's the best way to do it. We have the ability to target potential customers. Your own Facebook feed boosting and posting is very limited. So the marketing has a way better ability to target more people. That Gosh, Robin, that totally makes sense. Totally. So, so Mike, moving forward, how will digital marketing capabilities change your overall marketing strategy over at Cohill Avenue Food Hall? Well, I think, you know, our digital marketing is is really where it's at nowadays. Uh, you know, print is is obviously lost. I think all the media companies that had print, like Hagadon, are moving more towards digital. Um, although this week is a great publication, that's probably one of the most recognized ones um, with tourists in Waikiki. But most uh, print media now they have an online element with. Um, you know, their website or their Instagram or whatever. I personally haven't um, utilized Facebook yet. Um, it's definitely in my plan to start uh, driving business into our restaurant. Um, Instagram, I have utilized, but like Robin said, you're only as strong as how many followers you have. So if you're posting stuff on Instagram, you're not reaching a huge audience unless you have a huge following and then they're sharing it and things like that. What we have done is, is uh, teamed up with the mall and we have social media influencer events. So what's great is when you bring the influencers into your restaurant, they then, you know, advertise for you and they've got, you know, eight, nine, 15,000 followers, whatever it may be. And that has been really helpful. I mean, I, I can give you instances where we had an event and it's not my Instagram page that's blowing up, it's theirs that features us kind of thing. And then they tag or collaborate with us. So I think there is a lot of uh, a lot of benefit to that. But again, to Robin's point, it's about your followers, you know, and if you don't have enough followers, your impact of putting a blast out there is only reaching a limited audience. Um, so I'm interested to learn more about the Facebook thing um, website. I think it's absolutely critical uh, that you have a great website because you know, I can use Google Analytics or whatever and see how many people visit the website. And what was fascinating to me is once we got our website up and running to see what percentage of those viewers are looking at it from their phone versus a computer. And the numbers are mind boggling. It's like over 80%, sometimes 90% are browsing on their phone, not from a computer. So that gives you another idea of, of your audience and what they're doing, they're mobile, they're moving around, they're walking around which again, ties into the geo, geo tracking, right? Very interesting. So Robin, what's the difference between programmatic, pro, programmatic display strategy and other dis display strategies? Well, I was gonna turn this over to Ed, but because we're okay, go short, for it. No, it's okay. I mean, bottom line is this, since the day I started doing digital, I was like, why do we have to name everything? But programmatic, it's like acronyms with the military, right? Um, programmatic is the is 
All right, Ed, I'm, he's, I'm looking at him. Go ahead, Ed, you go for it. Have it, Ed. Well, I mean, to, to just keep it simple, it basically it just um, focus oh. your, focuses your display dollars and, and you know, makes it most efficient um, delivery to, to your targeted audience. It's not like you're trying to um, shoot a shotgun out there and then, you know, blast any, anything that and you hope you hit something. Um, programmatic focuses on, you know, behavior and, and, and tendencies of the user on the internet. And, you know, we're targeting those people that specifically align with the, you know, your goals and your strategies. And, and so, you know, we're making the best use of your, your advertising dollars in, in that regard. We're not wasting any impressions. And right. that's as, sim as simple yeah. as I can put it, right? Right. And basically the programmatic are the platforms that we're using to optimize and target more focused. Display strategy is the type of ad, right? So the display are the picture ads that follow you around. So programmatic is the entirety of whatever strategies we're using and platforms within the tech. And the display is the type of ad you're serving. So, yay. <laughs> Good job. Thank you for explaining that. <laughs> that is yeah. it. That's something I have to probably go back and listen to again. Yes. So, so as you know, the Hawaii Restaurant Association, we have restaurants that are fast food, quick service restaurants, family dining, fine dining, you know, the large chain restaurants. You know, um, we also have, of course, the bakeries and the coffee shops, all the other types of uh, organizations. Um, we even have hotels that have restaurants. So is there a difference in strategies for restaurants that compete in all the different categories? Is that for me? Um, that's for Robin or, or Ed. Okay. Yeah. Ed had his chance. No, just kidding. Okay. Uh, no, Ed's really was the CFO. So he's done an amazing job catching up. Trust me, he's great. Um, yeah. Wait, tell me again. The So, so if, if we're talking because oh, we- Oh, different, many... different types right. of restaurants. Right. Dining, so, right. Fast food. Yeah. Right. So for me, all strategy starts with the client's strategy. I mean, honestly, it's all can every campaign is based on what the, the client is hoping to achieve, what kind of budget they have. So I am a big fan of not going in with, you know, asking for huge budgets initially because there's a lot of data and a lot of opportunity in those first few weeks to really garner some really great information about how the campaign can be optimized and move forward. So basically we start with, you know, getting a good understanding of what they're trying to accomplish. And then we talk about budget and I'm like, look, you guys need to sit down, really focus, you know, and decide how much you can afford to spend initially until we have the opportunity to prove ourselves. So we go in with a minimum spend. We talk about, you know, what they're trying to accomplish. Is it butts and seats? Is it order online? Um, you know, is it join our rewards program? So whatever the, your type of restaurant is trying to accomplish, we base the strategy um, on that, you know, opportunity as well as a budget. So if they have a smaller budget, you'd probably get, you know, one platform. As the budget increases, we may add additional because there can be pay-per-click as well as display. You know, the display strategy alone has four or five tactics, right? Geofencing, conversion zones, um, you know, contextual keyword search. So there's a lot that goes into each different type of campaign. So depending on the budget is how we will decide how many platforms and how to move forward. So there's room for every budget, um, but I can tell you the more you spend, the faster it comes. I'm not sure if Mike can attest to that, but definitively um, the more opportunity. And then Mike, I'm not sure if you use conversion zone strategies with your tech, but our technology has the capability to serve ads to people in specific locations, but then also track them offline back to Mike's um, area back to his, I, I still call it, sorry, eat the street. I was there for the opening. I went to so many parties, but that whole venue is amazing. So, um, we can track how many people we've served ads to outside and then track them back offline into the business with a conversion zone. So that same type of geo fence is drawn around the business so that we can tell them, Hey, we served an ad to your competitor over at Alamona center food court. And they came three days later over to your venue. So we track who we serve ads to coming to the venue offline after. So that's really cool. Some people think it's creepy, but I totally dig it because we can prove what we're doing work. So I love that. So yeah, if there's an opportunity there with your tech to do the conversion zone, I would um, encourage everyone to use it. 
That's awesome, Robin. And you know, today's discussion is all about smarter marketing, utilizing mm-hmm. digital marketing. So before we, we've only got another five minutes. So before we close the show, um, Ed, do you have anything else that you want to say before we close the show about digital marketing? No, it just works. And, you know, from what I've seen and our clients, um, it, you know, they typically start with a smaller budget, but once we start proving ourselves and they can see the results and we can show it to them, um, typically we see our clients um, wanting to increase their budgets and, you know, um, and, and it, it just happens over and over again. And, you know, Robin's done a great, tremendous job in guiding these clients along and, you know, helping them achieve their goals. Um, just as just basic as that. No, you're right. Robin is awesome. I've known her, we've known each other, Thank like you. you said, 22 years and yeah. he knows her stuff. So Robin, as we talk, close the show about digital marketing, is there anything else you want to say as we close the show? No, I just would encourage people to like anything, shop around, talk to everyone. I mean, there's a lot of agencies and businesses dabbling in digital, but you got to find the people that actually focus full time so that they have a good understanding of exactly what your needs are and what platforms to use to get the results that you guys are hoping for. So yeah, we're here for all of you. Um, I'm grateful to all of you guys for having us. And we're here to answer any questions, free consultations, always happy to look at people's current strategies. We're one big family. I mean, HRA's family, you know, HLTA, all of these organizations come together to support businesses. And we're here from Hagedon to help you guys in any way we can. Very nice. And Mike, you know, you have the experience and have seen the success come from digital marketing. Is there anything you would like to say before we close the show? Yeah, I, w- I would just encourage any any entrepreneurs or restaurant owners out there that are considering because it, it is hard to choose where you're going to spend your marketing budget. And I would say you, you want to spend probably the majority of it in digital marketing would be my personal recommendation. Every location is different, but it, uh, you know, that I think the best advantage of digital marketing is you can actually track the results with a lot of other media out there. It's really hard other than maybe coupons that are physical and come in, you know, and you tear off and they're a pain to deal with and monitor uh, digital marketing. You can see how many people visit, Uh, The platform you're using, you can, you know, if you take it to the next level, like Robin and Ed spoke to, you can track them coming into your place of business and knowing if they came from, you know, the food court at Alamoana to International Mm -hmm. Marketplace, Um, you know, if you take it to that extent, as creepy as that may be. (laughs) Um, As a business owner, it's amazing to be able to get those kind of statistics and see that money I spent worked and it paid off. So, um, I think that is probably the greatest thing about digital marketing is it can be measured and um, you can see if it works. If it doesn't, you can change your strategy to something else. But um, it is the way of the future. And I think anybody that isn't using it needs to seriously consider, um, you know, partnering with Hagadon or like, I, I love it. Shop around. Um, look at restaurants out there that you admire, that you like. Look at what they're using and and what companies they may, um, you know, partner with. Uh, Cause there's a lot of restaurants that do a really good job at it. And then there's a lot that don't use it at all. And there's a lot in between. So I think definitely do your homework. Uh, the HRA is a great way to network and, you know, talk to other business owners about what they do. Um, so that's what I'd recommend shop around, but definitely get on board with it. Thank you, Mike. So Ed, if a, a business wants to get started, what is the best way to get started? I, I think we schedule a meeting, do a discovery call with Robin. Um, and um, I think we just go from there because everyone's situation is just a little bit different and their goals may be different. And um, we we ask a lot of questions. We really, really try to understand the business before we even come up with a solution. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. So viewers, members, If you're interested in learning more, your next step is to contact Hagadon Media Group. Their information is on the Hawaii Restaurant Association website, or you can contact me. Again, my name is Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association. I'd like to thank all of my guests today. And again, the Hawaii Restaurant Association is the voice 
of Hawaii's restaurant and food service industry. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.